if you're in construction, you know how important hammers are and you know how you can get attached to a particular hammer and how a particular hammer does the work you need to do in a way that it seems like no other hammer will, will perform. Now some of that is just habit and confirmation bias, isn't it? But it is a fact that the energy that a hammer discharges increases much more rapidly as the, with the speed of the blow than with the weight of the hammer. We're not going to go through that formula right now, but we're going to talk about what that means when you're considering what sort of a sledgehammer you need for driving concrete stakes. If you're a concrete worker, there are two sort of broad general categories of effort. There's the effort associated with setting up the forms and preparing the site to receive the concrete and the effort associated with placing and finishing, that is putting the concrete where it belongs and bringing it to the degree of consolidation and finish that you just got to get to please the client. But the first thing is the setup. And the first part of setup is putting stakes in the ground to anchor the forms to Mother Earth so that the concrete, while it's in its plastic state, is held where it needs to be so that it's right when the job's done and you got to have a hammer to do that. Hammers are a place where we're all tempted to sort of compete for manliness, isn't it? I mean a heavier hammer is always the domain of a stronger man. Maybe. I worked when I was in Las Vegas, I was there for eight years from about 1986 to 1994 and part of that time, two or three years, I worked for MS Concrete. They were a big commercial concrete outfit and residential concrete. There was 250 men on the payroll at the time. I think they got up to about 600 men after I left. That's a big concrete payroll that made them one of the top 10 place and finish companies in the United States. And their general superintendent was Dennis Bunker. And Dennis Bunker was quite a guy. Larger than life, smart, assertive, on the ball, not afraid to get in your face. And he had determined at some point in his past that a setup man should always use a sledgehammer that weighed between 10 and 12 pounds, and that's all he was interested in seeing you use. His reason for that was that the, the, the Las Vegas Valley is underlaid by a layer of caliche, and caliche is pretty much a naturally occurring concrete. It's cemented, and it, sometimes it's right at the surface and sometimes it's a couple feet down, but when you run into it with a concrete stake, the stake stops going down. And so he was sure that a heavier hammer would overcome that. I don't know if he ever if anybody ever explained to Dennis about speed versus mass, but the upshot of it was you had all these setup guys carrying 10 and 12 pound hammers with six inch handles because nobody, virtually nobody, can put a 16 or an 18 or a 20 inch handle on a 10 or a 12 pound sledge and run it with one hand. And you have to be able to hammer, use your sledge with one hand. So stubby handles. And I don't know, for a combination of reasons, I thought, you know, Dennis, I'm, I'm just not going to do that because I know how to hammer and I can get the work done, and that just doesn't work for me. This is an eight pound hammer. An eight pounder is what I used most of the time with MS because I didn't want him to yell at me, even though he liked me. But, you know, a stubby handle, you're essentially just using your arm as the handle and you give up the advantage of that lever action. But when you have a 10 or a 12 pounder, you've just got to get two hands on it, unless you're choked up short. So it became clear that that was defeating the advantage. And this is what constitutes the difference between a double jack and a single jack. A double jack is a sledgehammer with a handle long enough to use two hands. That's kind of a double jack. This is darn sure a double jack. Can you see that a handle that long enables you to get your, handle, your hands far enough apart that regardless of how strong or weak you are, you can put some speed on that hammerhead and deliver a real blow. But you don't have the convenience, you don't have the luxury of being able to use two hands when you're setting concrete stakes. You've got to be able to use one hand. And an eight pounder for me is just about the limit. And an eight pounder on maybe a 16 inch handle is about the limit. Now a lighter handle like this little blacksmithing hammer, that's a 12 and a half inch handle. Just right. You know, you can, you can use that all day and it's no problem. The eight pounder, yeah, you can use that for a while or you can use two hands. But a six pounder for me was just right because I could put it in my bags if I had to and I could certainly use it with one hand. Now I like to put an 18 inch handle or a 16 on a six pounder or I could get two hands on it. But what the heck good is a handle like that? So before we say another word, we got to fix this so it's a real tool. 16 inches is the target length for this handle.
So here's the beauty of that hammer now. I can use it with one hand all day long. In fact, that's the ideal way to use it. And if I need to get two hands on there for a sideways blow, I can certainly do that. And if I need to drop it in my bags for a while, I can certainly do that. And I will assert that there's effectively almost no difference between that blow and that blow, just because of the speed that's generated by reducing the weight, perhaps. Besides that, it won't tear my elbow out by the time I'm 26 years old. Okay, don't overlook that, guys. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. So everybody's got their own tool preference. Everybody has a different skill set and a different, it, it, we're all different. But from my perspective, the thing to always remember is don't get so committed to the way you've always done it that you're not open to thinking about a better way when it comes along. Don't be so committed to one brand or one size or one approach that you can't always be asking yourself, hmm, is it time to think of a different and a better way, including as you get older? So for me, from the time I was 30 until the time I've been 60, six pounder, 16 inch handle, pretty much ideal. This is gonna be repurposed into another hammer handle. I mean, okay, there's a good handle in there and there just ain't nothing like a good piece of hickory, especially when the grain orientation is just about right. Thanks for watching.